Praise the Lord. We're back in, we're back, we're back in business again. Uh, everything shut down, so we rebooted again, and uh, we're back in business. I praise the Lord for the patience that you don't get a sledgehammer and just come against everything and turn everything into little pieces. But teaching again on the tabernacle is that uh, people do not understand for example, Moses. We tend to forget that Moses spoke with the Lord. Here in chapter 25 of the book of Exodus, it's crystal clear what he said. And the Lord spoke unto Moses. <coughs> Excuse me. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. And again, bring me an offering, that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly in his heart. Willingly. Everyone that giveth willingly with his heart. He's. Give it with his heart. You should take my offering. And this is the offering where you should take of them. Gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine. Well, you can see all that I'm asking for. And oil for the light and spices. But the important thing you can read it is number eight. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. So you mean that the Lord showed Moses the pattern of the tabernacle. So Moses, all that Moses needs to do is to copy what he saw. Copy. So we've been teaching of here of Israel, Shema of Israel, which means again here of Israel, intelligently. Are we hearing intelligently? And if you really break the Bible to the simplest term, sometimes the experts will complicate things so they continue to be experts. And the more complicated that things are, we get more confused. Because we didn't complicate it. They complicated it for us. So the simple thing is this. Number one, the sanctuary. Make me a sanctuary. Why? Let's go back. Garden. What happened in the garden? The Lord gave man life the Lord made man a living soul made a garden for the man put man in the garden man was alone in the garden was one so the Lord out of the man make a woman to turn man into two so now man has company then put it in the garden and said to the man actually before the woman he put it in the garden but just for you that like to be picky on words. So in the garden, he put man, and he tell man, man, listen, you can have everything. You can eat of everything, but of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat. The day you eat, thou shalt surely die. Are you hearing, man? The man supposed to hear. And if he's smart and intelligent, and hear intelligently, he will not have touched the tree. But then he gave man a woman, so man will not be alone. The woman fell in love with the tree of the knowledge and good and evil. And looked at it, and looked at it, and looked at it. Finally communicated with the serpent. Which I always said the serpent is yourself. Okay? The serpent is yourself. Your desires, you want what you desire. So... The woman decide to eat of it because it will make her wise and it will make it as God. That's envy. 
that's willing to have. So man got kicked out out of the garden. Great. Now man died. Man cannot get life back again. They lost the life. So the only way that man can get life is by the Lord himself bringing himself back to them. Because only the Lord is life. So the Lord had to come back to give life to man. So the very first thing that happened after man's fall is Adam and the woman and Eve get some kids. Cain and Abel. Cain represent evil. Abel represent good. Evil kill good. Then God had to bring a substitute. His name was Seth. So now you have good and bad. The substitute is Seth. And out of Seth come the seed of Noah. Why Noah? Because the whole world, the wickedness of the thought of the heart continually was evil. Evil. Doing was wrong. And if you don't believe me, read what he said that the sons of God have intercourse with the daughters of man. If you really look at this, is evil man involved with evil again. Because the seed of man was a good thing. What the seed of Seth was good. But the evil wickedness of the sons of God dwell with the woman. And guess what happened? The whole world goes wicked. Only Noah remains. God, the Lord is about to destroy man. Choose Noah and his three sons. Start something new. This is Bible, chapter 6. By chapter 12 of the book of Genesis, you have Abram. Out of everything, Abram, back to one man again. And God tell Abraham, Abraham, leave everything. And out of thy seed, all the families of the world will be blessed. That's Genesis chapter 12. And Abraham wasn't that blessed either because Abraham messed it up too. You go to Egypt, get into trouble in Egypt. Out of Egypt, he bring Hagar. Hagar is used by Sarah. Sarah gave Hagar to Abraham because she wanted to be part of bringing out the seed. Created a problem. For who? For the Lord again. So there's a problem. Good. But the Lord doesn't give up. The Lord keep working. So out of Isaac came Esau and Jacob. Jacob endowed with 12 children. His name is changed to Israel. They go to Egypt. You know how many years happened from Jacob to the time that Moses? 400 years from Abraham to Moses. In Moses is when now a people, a nation is born. The nation of Israel is born. Out of that seed of Isaac that came from Abram. That should bring Christ into the picture. And I'm being so quickly because I'm running out of time for this. So Moses is the promise of the Lord to Abraham. That the seed was going to be captive, but that they will be come out of it with great substance. And the new thing will begin. That is a confirmed prophecy within 500 years with Moses. Then Moses ends up in the mountain talking to the Lord. Come on, this is insane. A man talking to God, he went inside the cloud. When we read chapter 25 of the book of Exodus, Moses was in the presence of the Father. Moses was in heaven. Moses was talking to God. Moses was seeing the true tabernacle. And what Moses saw, the Lord told him, Moses, to build it exactly like that one. In other words, just copy. Copy and paste. Copy, right click, paste. Do the same thing. That's it. We're supposed to be doing copy and paste. But we are so dumb that we don't hear intelligently, right? So Moses built the tabernacle. And that's the part that I will show you over here. See if I can get Moses over here. So this place over here is called the tabernacle. And I show you the entrance of the tabernacle. You see the entrance to the tabernacle. And you see a curtain with some figures in. Those figures in are called cherubs, cherubims, which means, which means 
imaginary figures. Imaginary. Imagination. The imagination. Why the imagination? I'll tell you why. If I take you back here and you see this right here where you see my the cursor over here, that is the tabernacle. Right here. But that tabernacle is surrounded by the 12 tribe of Israel. One, two, three. These are tribes. These are people. These are tens. One, two, three. Another one here. Four, five, six. Another one here. Seven, eight, nine. Another one here. Ten, eleven, twelve. And then the people that are in charge of building the tabernacle are right here. Judah. I mean, Levi, I'm sorry. Moses and the people that build the tabernacle are surrounding the tabernacle. So when we truly look at the outer court of the tabernacle, this section over here, this is surrounded by a curtain. Can you see the curtain? That curtain, see? That curtain goes all around the tabernacle. You can see it, right? So what can you see from outside? Nothing. Only a curtain. So that curtain that you see, that blue one right there, it make you think. It make you use your imagination. Are you using your imagination? What is inside? What is inside that place? Only the Levites knew what was inside the tabernacle. Now inside the tabernacle, the very there were three fixtures inside the tabernacle there. This one is called the brazen altar. This is where they do the sacrifice. Out here, I believe that out here, in this area, maybe there were the animals and the Levites cutting and killing the sacrifice. So they can take it. All this area here probably was full of animals over here to be sacrificed. They were coming in by the Levites. Okay? And then they were going to be taken to the labor, I mean to the brazen altar. And this is the brazen altar here. This is literally where they put the animals in, right here, to cook. This is steamy hot. This is cooking. This is hot. This is fire. And then you see over here the hook, the shovel for the, for the ashes, basin for the ashes. Then you see the hook for the meat and the uh, utensils or the, uh, uh, I don't know, I forgot, then I can't even recall. Oh. Uh, the basins for the blood. See? And these are the horn of the brazen altar that the Bible talks about. So over here, blood can be shed around here in all the areas and ashes. This is the proof to move the meat. This is the brazen altar. That's one figure. The other one is farther back. And that one is called... the labor go back here well, let me use it. back here oh, come on Lord One way or the other. Okay, right here. This is the labor. What is the labor? This is where the priest used to wash his hand. This is an interesting design. I don't think it was this good, but maybe it was. They have water in for the priest to wash themselves. Maybe it was made this way for the water. So the priest can wash. You can see that not kind of nice, huh? 
You're very modern. <laughs> laughing at that, you know. Like a cow with the boobs, right? The nipples. Drinking milk, water. Oh, that's a good design. Remember that. That man always imitate animal. So, from here, this is what they do. You can see over here. Okay. Of the water. Now, that's number two. Number three is the whole building over here. Let me go back out of the building so we can see it. So there. So you see the three pieces? The holy place, the labor, and the bracing altar. Three pieces. Imagine that three. Now, if you are from outside, what do you know is inside? You don't know what is inside, so you are using your imagination. Now imagine that, that the priest goes inside the holy place. And what happened inside the holy place? That's a very interesting thing that happened there. Look what you hear. So over here is the prayer that we studied for the last two weeks called Shema O Israel, Adonai Elohim Adonai Echad, which he meant here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. That's the high priest. But inside this holy place, they are another chamber that you call the most holy, which is in the other side of this curtain that you see over here. This is the most holy place. There's a curtain. There's a separation. Okay. Only the high priest, only this guy over here, the high priest can go inside that place. But for now, let's see what's in here. And what you see in here is, number one, this guy over here, this guy, the table of showbread. The table of showbread means, well, let me go back over here, sorry. Go around in a circle. Come on. Right here. This is an interesting design for the table of showbread. The table of showbread has the face of Israel. This is called the bread. They have bread, but it's talking about the face of Israel. And this is a very interesting design. Look at the other guy. You guys that knew about keeping the Shabbat, look at the bread. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the other side, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is where they keep the bread. The faces of Israel. Okay. So that's one. On the other side of it, when we go around, oh, if they move. We have the lampstand. The lampstand with the knobs that they say Moses how to build it. And Moses saw. That's why it's designed this way. Because this is what Moses saw. Moses saw something similar. So he draw, he paste and copy into the real world what he saw in heaven. Right here. The lampstand. Okay, and this now, look at this, one, two, three, four, you can say, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, that's 12, look in the other side, one, two, three, four, 12, and over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, interesting, all that will make sense someday to us, 
because everything has a meaning and a purpose. But then that's a candlestick. Outside the candlestick, there's another part of the furniture, which the priest has over here, which is the wine. The wine and the utensils of the wine. And you can see them here clearly. Where well, they share the wine, you know. They like to have party inside the tabernacle, huh? God forgive me to say that, but Yayin was there. And then we see over here, One more thing over here, see? Those are the utens the utensils used to clean what? The lamb stand. The light to remove the flies and everything else and to keep the oil flowing out of it. Interesting, yeah, beautiful, isn't it? Huh? See? And then after all that, the other furniture that is here that we don't see much, let me go over here, is the altar of incense. The altar of incense is where they burn the frank incense and everything else and put the frank incense, hot coal, and throw the, in, the frank incense, the mirror and whatever the other instance was that I don't recall right now. Anyway, just for time's sake. Then after that, there's the one section over here that we haven't talked much about, which is this guy over here. This is the high priest. The high priest. Important guy. Why? Because what he represents. The mind, holiness unto the Lord, the shoulders, the government, the tribe of Israel, the twelve tribe of Israel, in his heart, the breastplate with the ephod, the twelve tribe of Israel, they are the burden of Israel, the, 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 the consuming of sin. Inside these, there's also the urine and the famine prophetic stones then the rest of the garment you can see down to the bells on it that he should wear on it so this man over here is the key is the only one the only one the high priest that can go to the next place which is behind this curtain behind that curtain actually no that curtain this other this one over here sorry this one over here and this curtain on the other side, what we found is the Ark of the Covenant. And the Ark of the Covenant, you can see over here that inside of it, there's supposed to be three things. The tables, I mean the tablets, of the Lord, Aaron's rod, which is not here, and manna, which are not here, but they're supposed to be in here, inside this play, but it's not there, okay? But it's supposed to be there anyway. But just a small study over here. But this is the Ark of the Covenant. And these two figures over here are cherubims. And it's within here, this empty space that the Lord will speak to Moses or to the high priest and Aaron. Right from here, between the cherubim and the mercy seat. That is unique right there. And then, the blood will go right there into the mercy seat. If I can turn that one. This is the mercy seat right here. The blood got to go here. Okay. So from there... We go back out again. Oh, let me go over here. And when you go outside, you go to the holy place. Now, this is the tabernacle of Moses. What is important in the tabernacle of Moses 
is that that's what he saw while he was with the Lord in heaven. Now, what this all got to do with you and I? It is for time's sake. You can check it out. From here, it took 500 years to David. It is with David in 2 Samuel chapter 7 that he talked clearly about the Lord building something with David, because David tell the Lord that he want to build something, but the Lord say, no, I'm building something. You are building me anything. So when you go to Second Samuel, let's go over there. I just can never do justice. And he said, and the Lord had given him rest around about from all his enemies. This is Second Samuel 7, 1. That the king said unto Nathan the prophet, see now, I dwell in in a house of cedar but the ark of god dwelleth within curtains and nathan said to the king go do all that is in thine heart for the lord is with thee and he and he came to pass pass that night that the word of the lord came unto nathan saying go and tell my servant david thus said the lord shall thou build me a house for me to dwell in this is the lord asking are you going to be me a are you going to build me a house for me to dwell in? Where I have not dwelt in any house, the Lord answers, since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in tabernacles. This is key, tent and tabernacle. In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel. Spake, I aware with any of the tribe of Israel whom I commanded to feed, my people Israel saying, Why build you not me a house of cedar? Now therefore, so shall thou say unto my servant David, Thus said the Lord of hosts. Now look at this. I want you to pay attention to this. He said, I took thee from the sheep goat, from following the sheep, to be a ruler over my people, over Israel. And I was with thee, whithsoever thou wentest and have cut off all thy enemies out of thy sight, and had made thee a great name, like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. Moreover, look at this now. Moreover, I will appoint a play for my people Israel, and we plan them, that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither, neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. And as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, and have caused it to rest from all thy enemies, also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee in house. And when thy day be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy father, I will settle thy seed after thee, after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chase him with the rod of men. And with the stripe of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him. Now listen. It's important. I cough over here when he said. That he will make thee a house. He will make thee a house. Be fulfilled. And thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. Listen. For time's sake. And I got to go. I'm running late out of time. I got all the commitment. And I feel bad that I got to stop this. But I want you to read Isaiah chapter 7. Verse 14. I want you to read also Isaiah chapter 9. 
verse 6. I also want to read Isaiah 40, 1 through 6. Jeremiah 31, 31. Then go to the so-called Matthew chapter 27. When the Lord gave up his ghost and the veil rented. That's the key. When the veil rented. Listen to me. What happened in the temple? The most holy place became. The holy place became the most holy place. Inside that compartment. Now the outside became the holy place. And outside of the curtains of the tabernacle became the outer court. So the blood of Yeshua have cleansed the world. It is the world that must rise up. The world must rise up through Yeshua, through Jesus, through the word, and claim the salvation, claim the kingdom. But that is walking through holiness. That is by being sanctified. That's by being holy. That's by keeping our mind holy unto the Lord. That's why getting the new heart, a new compartment in ourselves that allowed Yahweh and Messiah Yeshua to dwell in us. Then go to chapter 20 of Revelation and see how the man with the reed, golden reed, and the man in Ezekiel chapter 40 with the reed measuring the temple. They are measuring the inside. In Ezekiel, he talk about the inside. The inward parts. We must understand that the work that has been done is in the depth of our being. We are the earth. We are the deepest thing of the earth is your heart. The deepest that Jesus descended to the deepest part of man. The deepest part of the earth is the heart of man. Because only the word comes through your ears and through your heart. So the word Christ going to you to bring the new life, to bring the new truth. But this is gone and happened through sacrifice. If we don't sacrifice anything, if we don't encourage yourself to do it, it's not going to get done. The Lord will not do it. You have to receive the word. You have to grow in faith. It is you that must walk in the high of it. You can. I understand. Yes. Understand that. That it is you. It is us. We must receive the word. He out of Israel. We are now the church. We are the heavenly Israel. We are the woman. We need to hear intelligently the word. That go deep into our heart. And transform this being into the image of Christ. Which is the image of the Father. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm telling you, this message got to get out. I'm saying to Kalamazoo, you are a church, you are a, you are a church over there. Today the Lord showed me, and I say to the world, I must rise up as an apostle, apostle. Start to build fellowship in houses like you in Kalamazoo, in Georgia, in New York, in Salvador, in Nicaragua, all over the world, wherever they are listening to us, we must start. Working and telling and sharing and spreading the people to hear the word of who they are. They are the sanctuary. We are the sanctuary of the living God. It is the Lord that rules. It is the Lord that is our temple. But we are in Him and within Him. He's our light. He's our life according to the book of Revelation. And it's all there. So this is a simple message. It is us that must hear intelligently and rise up for the truth in the Lord. And your life will change. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I saw a big wave out of there. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. See? But it's the word. The, I believe the word can change you. Listen, it has been said that words alone change your DNA. If word can change your DNA... Tell me how much more the true word of the living God can change your entire being into a glorious body, into the apocalypse, the manifestation of the sons of God. This is what we're waiting. And Babylon is falling because Babylon has to fall away from us. The world must fall off 
fall away from us. That's where things are. And with that being said, don't forget to give and donate. We need to get new computers. These computers are failing. Not because it's quite old now, but praise the Lord. If you don't send, it's okay. If you send, praise the Lord. If you don't, praise the Lord. I don't care. I'm just going to do whatever it takes in my sight to push the word of the living God. But if you can join hands with me, we can do this together. Apostle Oli, this is the same one. One that is sent by who? By the Lord Jesus to do, to preach his word. Amen. And I want to encourage all of you, all of you, to understand, number one, Beth Yeshua. Hallelujah. House of Yeshua. Now do you understand that we are the house of Yeshua? We are the temple that he's building. We are that house. We are that house. Don't you understand? We are the house. Glory be to God. That's why we teach through quantum theology is looking for the depth of the word in you. What it does on us. It doesn't matter if you have millions or you broke. It doesn't matter if you eat or you don't eat. It has nothing to do with food or physical things. It has to do with the word of the living God in us. And if you send me text, send it to 989-941-6512. Hallelujah. Let it be. Text me. And if you need prayers, call 989-633-77. Leave me a message. I call you back. We sit down with prayer. Someone in the church would call you anyway. And we'd be in agreement, but we want the agreement of truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must rise up. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we love you all from Beth Yeshua Church of Midland. In uh, let's chew on this, will you? Let's meditate on it. I know you got questions. You can ask. We love you. Quantum theology, Apocalypse of America. Don't forget to give. And I'm sorry for the crashing of the equipment today. But the Lord is merciful. We got back online and we did our best. All we can say, thank you, thank you, Lord, thank you, Yeshua. Until next time, we love you. Bye bye now.